Hi everyone, welcome back to Crafting at Whimsy Wonderland. My name is Stacy. Today I have day number 10 and Christmas in July for you. And I have some Christmas wands that I'm gonna show you how to make. Now, what you'll need for this is two pieces of paper cut 12 inches long by two inches wide. And you'll need to take a scoring tool and score every half an inch. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I've got some score marks on there. So you need two of those. You'll need a scallop punch uh, or some kind of punch to be your center. And you might want some crepe paper to decorate the middle and I'll show you how to make a quick rosette. You may want a little glitter for the edge of that. And I just have some regular embellishments. These are left over from a project I did a while back. They're from close to my heart. So I might use these rosettes instead of the crepe paper one. You will also need some Christmas pencils. And I stock up on these every year at the Dollar Tree when they have them because they have so many cute designs. I just have buckets and buckets of pencils because I do all sorts of things with them. So you'll need some kind of pencil. If you don't have a Christmas one, uh, you could use a regular pencil. I just like the decorative ones because they're cute. And then you're going to need some kind of embellishment for the middle, like some stickers or uh, whatever you want to decorate it with. I intend to make these for a little kid to play with, so I'm going to use a cute little sticker. And I'm loving these little snowman ones. Um, these were from Walmart last year after Christmas. These came from the Target Dollar Spot. They're kind of puffy. These are a little bit puffy. They're from the Dollar Tree. And these are also from the Dollar Tree. It's like all my leftovers from my projects that I did last Christmas. And there's lots of little snowmen and snowflakes and whatnot in there. I always put my leftover ones back in a package so they don't get dusty and damaged over the a uh, year while I'm waiting for Christmas to roll back in, around again. So you'll need something to decorate the middle with, whatever you want your theme to be. I try to make it kind of go with whatever paper I've chosen. I really like to use double-sided paper for this. And I got this paper, I don't remember, last Christmas or maybe even a Christmas before, at Tuesday morning. It came a packet of 25 or 50 sheets and uh, I've just been using it on a lot of things. So if I punch my centerpiece out of it as well, then I'll have a coordinating piece with the same colors. So uh, you don't have to use double-sided, just double-sided will make it pretty on both sides. So that's what I'm choosing to use. I've also made them with the Michaels Hot Buy papers. You do want this to be kind of a cardstock. You don't want regular copy paper weight paper. You want it cardstock, lightweight cardstock. Since these are just two inches wide for a 12 inch piece of paper, you can get six strips, which will make three rosettes. So they're pretty economical to make. And our, I'm gonna show you and tell you a little story while I'm folding this. So what you're going to do is on every score mark that you've made, cause you scored across every half an inch going this way, you're gonna fold back and forth on each score mark. Okay, and you're just basically fan folding. Now, when I was about eight years old, we went on a trip to my grandma and grandpa's house for Christmas. And, you know, I'm almost 50 now, so that was a few years ago. And my mom forgot to pack our Christmas stockings. Well, Walmart wasn't around in that area yet. And so there were no 24-hour stores where you could go and buy a new one. And my sister and I were worried that Santa wouldn't come if we didn't have our stockings. And so my dad started a new tradition that year. He got a hold of Santa and uh, we did a scavenger hunt. We didn't have stockings to hang up. So there was a note on the table for my sister and I, and it had a clue in it. And we took a scavenger hunt all over my grandma and grandpa's house to find all the presents that were supposed to be in our stockings that we had forgotten to pack. So that tradition stuck. We had so much fun doing that. We asked dad to ask Santa to do that again. So the following year, Santa did it again and he's been doing it ever since. And then when I got old enough to have children, I asked Santa to do that for my children as well. All right. Now, when you get done folding this, both edges are going to be, a, the ends are going to be aiming up. So when you fold the next piece, you need to do it opposite. So this one, I, I folded the blue to the blue. This time I'm going to fold white to white. So that way my tabs will lock together. I hope that makes sense. 
So anyway, we have been doing that tradition in our family for years now. And I did it for my kids, and I'm hoping when my children have kids that they will do it too. It takes a little bit of effort for Santa to do that, but you know. I always like to have something like this to put in the stocking for the first clue. And then you can tie a note to it, and they get a cute little something in their stocking, and then they go hunting for the rest of the stuff. You don't have to worry then about... The stocking being too heavy or how to fit all of the things in that you want to put in the stocking. Um, we always had like M&Ms would be hidden in the freezer or um, I don't know all over the house. And I remember one year dad had hidden something. I mean Santa. <laughs> I remember one year Santa had hidden something in the washing machine and he forgot to leave a note for my mom. My mom got out of bed that morning and threw the wash the laundry into the washing machine and started it up. Well, dad comes flying out of bed and says, stop, Santa left something in there. And uh, yeah, luckily it was something that was sealed and the water didn't damage it. So anyway, that's my reminiscing for right now. And now I have two accordion shapes folded out of my paper. Now I'm going to grab some tacky glue. This is clear tacky glue. You can use any kind of glue you want. I would not recommend using um, like tape runner or ATG or anything like that because you want a permanent bond on this. So I've got some glue on the end. I'm just gluing one tab and I'm going to put the two tabs together from the two pieces and I'm just going to squeeze it down. You could use hot glue for this, but why? <laughs> so that's where my seam is, and I need to let that dry for a minute while I do the other side. Same thing, just a little bit of glue on the last flap. Kind of spread it around a little bit. And then put them together. And now what I'm doing is forming a circle. When the two ends are glued together, they form a little bit of a circle. Okay, now it's important that this glue has time to dry before you do the next step. Okay, I'm gonna, while I'm letting that dry, I'm going to cut two scallops with my scallop punch. This is a, I think, two inch, let's see. Yep, this is a two inch scallop punch. I love these ones that are that squeeze like that. It's just easier for my hands. So when I get to crafting over Christmas and I get really busy doing a whole lot of things, my hands get really tired and this is one of the easiest punches for me to use. Okay, so it just pops up like that. I flip out the piece and then I'm done with that. Okay. So this is what I'm going to glue to to keep my um, rosette together. Now, I squish my rosette together and you kind of grab up the edges and on one side and you flatten it out. Okay, it takes a little tucking and a little messing around, but it gets in there, you push it down, and it gets flat. Now, you have a choice. You can, you need a piece of paper to hold it all together. You can do the opposite of what's there, or you can flip it over and make it match. I'm going to do the opposite just so there's some contrast. Yeah. So I'm going to put some glue, and this time I am using hot glue because I want this to dry quickly. And I'm going to use my silicone mat. Okay, this is just a silicone baking sheet. I got them for baking cookies and I didn't like it for that, but I love it for hot glue. So I've got my piece that has the glue on it. I'm going to, you want to make sure that your rosette um, ruffles or whatever you want to call it are kind of even because once this glue hardens, you won't be able to adjust those. So if you've like got squeezed together over here, you need to make sure that you get them centered or spread out evenly. And you just want to kind of push in the edges up under that scallop piece 
and keep pushing it in so that it stays together while you're gluing. Okay, and you can flip it over and you need to do the same to the other side. All right, that's the first step, all done, okay? Now this is where I need to decide. Do I wanna put the crepe paper rosette on there? And the way you make the crepe paper rosette, I make them quick and easy. You can stitch them if you want. I just kind of finger crimp it and call it good because most of it doesn't get seen. So I'm doing about 18 inches worth of crepe paper. Most people do 12. I just like mine a little bit fuller. This one was made with 12 inches. I'm just kind of gathering it up at the center. Hope you can see that. Okay, I'm just pulling it together at the center and letting it fan out at the edges. If you stitch it, there are tons of videos that show how to do it the other way with stitching. I think that takes too much time. So you get it all gathered around, kind of even it out a little bit, and then you're just going to put a staple through the middle. And then I turn it and staple it the other way too, just so I make like the little X on the staple across there. But I think I'm going to stick with the little one. And I might even put one of these on. I like to decorate both sides of mine. I think I'm going to put this on the polka dotted paper because I think it blends nicely. And that will become the back side. Now this has a foam mounting dot on it but I never just rely on those foam mounting dots I, for these things. I want them to be nice and durable, so I always put a little extra hot glue. So I'm gonna center that. It has a little pearl in the middle. I think that's really pretty. And I'm, that's the back side. And then on the front is where I'm going to put my sticker. Now, stickers, it depends on your sticker, whether you wanna trust it or not. Um, as far as do you want to put hot glue on it? I don't really like that on that printed paper is the problem. I got a piece of uh, burgundy colored paper that kind of matches the burgundy on the uh, print of the paper and I'm just cutting a new scallop. And then I can match the scallop up on here or I could even print, cut a bigger one. Now I just want to see what my sticker looks like on that. I like that better, so I'm going to put my sticker on. Kind of thinking I like it with the with the pink on there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put a glob of glue on the back of my crepe paper rosette, and I'm only putting it in the middle. I want there to be movement on the edges. So I'm putting that on there and letting it be in the center. Now I have my snowman guy on a scallop and I think that's really cute. I am going to put glue almost to the edges of this one. And then I'm going to glue him on. I have this pencil from Dollar Tree. It has little different cups of and mugs of hot cocoa. And this is my front. This is my back. I like both sides to be pretty. I'm going to figure out where I want my wand to be. Now, a lot of people use a straw for this, and that is perfectly fine. That works, too. But I like to use a pencil because then it's usable, okay? It's not just a toy. It becomes something functional. So center your pencil on the way that you like it and figure out where it's gonna go and then fill that little slot on the back with some hot glue and then stick that pencil up into that puddle. Now your eraser is gonna get ruined. That's just life. The cost of doing business. Okay, and as that warms up the glue that is holding this on, it will allow you to shove that pencil up a little bit farther so that the metal piece is covered. And that's usually my goal. Now, you can be done right there if you want. Or you can tuck some ribbon up under here and let it be a little streamer. I tend to keep them pretty simple because if they're pencils, you don't want too much stuff hanging off of them. Okay, 
So that is my Rosette Christmas Wand. I sell these for $3 or two for five in my craft booth. And I just use up things I have in my stash and I use up scraps of paper. And I just have fun with it and design and use as many cute things as I can find that I have. I hope you go and make these before yourself. Give them a try. They're lots of fun to do and you can mix and match all of your stickers and papers and use up what you have. So if you make some of these yourself, post a picture. I'd love to see how yours turn out. Let me know how you like this craft. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell on the side so you don't miss the next video. This has been the 10th day of Christmas in July here at Crafting at Whimsy Wonderland. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time.